So step eight is to it is really to fine tune the service, right? You're assessing how it's working. You're assessing how the recruitment is working, and and generally adapting and improving workshops, uh, webinars, uh, open houses, uh, email campaigns, uh, posters in the lunchroom. I mean, there's all kinds of techniques, and uh, and some organizations find that they start with some practices, and then over time. They determine which are the most effective in their organization or in different parts of their organization. And so, so that's one example of how the fine-tuning can happen. Let me describe a common evolution of the service that requires adapt, uh, adaptation. You have a group who onboards and they use the service to request certificates. They like it and they learn that the service is capable of automating the installation of those certificates so they no longer have to do that. So they come back to you and they want it now use more of the service. They want to use automation. There's a really common uh, way that uh, the service has to change and evolve. As you think about that, that natural evolution, one of the things that you're likely to experience is that a number of big users come on board. You see material benefits. Outages drop significantly and there'll be a temptation to relax. But there's danger in that approach. And so uh, let me tell you how the, the most successful organizations have responded to that. They continue to work hard to get the adoption across every part of the enterprise, not just as it, uh, every part that exists, but to make it a part of the culture that anytime a new technology is introduced, anytime a new application is introduced, that part of that introduction is an education and awareness of the machine identity protection program that offers this certificate uh, as a service. This is especially important and, uh, and, and these days exceedingly common that applications and technologies are being introduced in the cloud. DevOps teams are rolling out you know, all kinds of, uh, of new things, maybe in AWS, there may be new architectures, you know, any, any number of new approaches to building something. And the service offering that you have has to evolve with those new applications, with those new technologies. So the need to just really keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening, what the service needs to be, and how it's being adopted is critical or you may, you may find yourself falling behind and beginning to experience a new and increase in outages. As you're recruiting, one of the other things that you have to continue to watch and evolve on is the actual service offering itself. Is your service offering still meeting the needs of the broad organization? Does it have the capabilities that are needed in, uh, in, you know, in today's environment. You may roll your service out, but we all know how quickly the technology landscape is changing. The introduction of, of DevOps-related tool chains and cloud computing environments has dramatically accelerated the, the use of new technologies and the, the introduction of new applications. You roll your service out now, and a year from now, or two years from now, your service offering may need to look very different than it does today. So continuing to evolve with the evolution of technology and the growth of the business is also essential. So another driver for why your service needs to evolve over time, beyond keeping up with new technologies, is to compensate for human error. A group will sign up for the service. They'll begin using it. And they'll request certificates and then manually go install those certificates. Application owners, when they work with certificates, they make mistakes. And it happens in part because they do this infrequently. Right? If a certificate expires once a year, this is something they're doing only once a year. So a common, uh, a common part of the service offering to combat the, the propensity for human error is to roll out validation, where the platform now automatically after dispensing a certificate to an application owner, it automatically checks on a nightly basis to see if that certificate 
is fully in place and active, alerting if it hasn't been successfully installed. When human errors get detected uh, through validation, then it it creates an environment for the next level of evolution. It not only helps prevent the human error, but it also recoups that person's time. So a lot of services will start with this, um, you know, this, this uh, ability to request a certificate and, and uh, a validation to see if certificate owners are doing the right thing. But then after a period of time, they evolve to start automating the humans out of the picture. It's a very natural and uh, common process. So when we looked at the most successful customers, automation was a big part of what they did. And not only because it helped eliminate the human error and thereby re further reduce outages, but also because of the time it recouped uh, for their teams. Every info security team struggles to have enough time to do all the things they need to do. So the hallmark of every successful program for stopping outages included heavy dependence on automation, and that's what every customer should be looking to do. Still have questions? Turn to Venify, the machine identity experts. Check out our channel or visit Venify.com to learn about all things encryption, certificate management, and more.